What's up Lego Builders? Welcome back to Coconut Brick Studios for a review. Surprise! Can't even remember the last time I did a review. I think it's not been since that little General Grievous Brickhead. So it's been a little while. Definitely going to be a little bit rusty, but I am very excited to review this today. This is a custom UCS scaled Republic attack shuttle. This isn't my design. This was designed by Bruxy. You can find the instructions on Rebrickable. I'll put them down below in the comments. I do have some specs for you though. Between the ship and the stand, there are 2,317 pieces. From the bottom of the wing, when they're folded down to the top of the antenna, it's about one and a half feet tall. It's 14.5 inches long and 22 inches wide from wingtip to wingtip. So if you are planning on building and displaying this, make sure you set aside a pretty large chunk of space to display it. The cargo area has a holding capacity capacity of 10 minifigures plus two pilots here in the front and you can put some minifigures up here in this little door area and it costs about 400 US dollars to build. Now for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the Republic Attack Shuttle and where it fits in the whole Star Wars universe, the Republic Attack Shuttle or New Class Attack Shuttle was used by Republic forces during the Clone Wars. It's basically a long-range version of the Republic gunship with a built-in hyperdrive, heavier armor, and more comfortable seating, making it a better option for long-range transport, but not as ideal as an infantry support craft like the gunship, so it is more often used in a transport capacity. So in this review, I'm gonna break the whole ship down, kind of share with you guys some things I liked, some things I didn't like. I'm gonna break down its different features and functions and kind of show you how the build comes together as well as showing you the stand. And then after that, I'm gonna sit down and give you guys my thoughts. All that being said, I'm pretty sure that's everything I have to share with you guys. Let's get on with the review. So I took it off the pedestal and I've got it here in landing mode with the wings up. One thing I do want to know, if you do plan on displaying it like this, you're going to want to build some custom landing gear because this sits directly on the bottom of the ship, which is flush with these sides and you can't pick it up from the sides here else these parts will break off. So if you put some landing gear and raise it up a little bit, you can get your hands underneath easier and pick it up. The first thing that jumps out to you with this model is definitely the size. It's huge. I knew it was going to be big. I saw you know how many parts go into it and I've seen the images and stuff but during the process of building it I kept being surprised over and over again with just the dimensions and scale of this. It absolutely dwarfs the official Lego version. You know the official Lego version does a good job of capturing the overall look and feel of the shuttle but this definitely takes the cake for accuracy and scale. Kind of looks like a baby elephant and a mama elephant stand next to each other when you put these two ships together. This one is definitely more comparable to the UCS Imperial shuttle which makes sense considering the attack shuttle is kind of like the precursor or the predecessor to the Imperial shuttle. They do have some build similarities with the wings which you can probably see and on the sides of the ship. I'm not sure what the piece count is for the Imperial shuttle but I would imagine they're pretty much the same because they're pretty close because they're really close in size. Really, the only thing the Imperial Shuttle has on this one is height because of that tall fin in the middle. So I'm probably going to start with the top of the ship and kind of work my way out onto the wings and then up to the front cockpit. So this middle section is where the troop cargo air, troop slash cargo area is. And you just take off this top section here. There's nothing in here. Um, I think, it, yeah, it's hollow. So nothing really to show you guys there. It does come off pretty easily. Most of this black frame right here is tile, which allows you to take it on and off pretty easily. The interior is really simple, but really cool looking. You've got the five, you've got 10 seats, five on each side, and you can see there is some nice detailing on the seats. You've got little, I don't know, handholds, some kind of rest or clip, or some kind of hold, rest or holder on each side of the seat. And then you've got the tan seat back right here, the bottom right here. And then here on the back, we've got the weapon rack to hold all of the weapons for the troops while they're in transit. And then you do also have some transclear tiles up here to signify lighting along the sides of the ship with some nice little detailing with the white tiles and then dark bluish gray tiles and grills here on the floor of the ship. And then up here on the front, you have a little black arch, which signifies what would be a hallway that leads up here to the front of the ship where you exit out of 
the hatch on the front of the cockpit. All in all, it's a pretty spacious little area and you have a lot you can do with it. Next, I'm gonna move on to the wings here. This section right here was probably the most frustrating area to build. This model was not built physically. You know, he only ever rendered the model in 3D, the designer, and that really shows in this part. Um, the wings were really tough to build. You know, a lot of these panels aren't really hooked together. They're held together by a lot of these white round tile looking things and so now it's strong and pretty secure but like building it was a really big pain and then these middle round half round pieces whatever you want to call them tend to pop off a lot because they're only some of them are only hooked on on the top right here in very with very weak connections kind of like this you can see this entire thing is only hooked on by this brick right here and then that brick needs to connect up here so if you touch over here and move these wings a lot these will pop off and they are kind of hard to get back on. I do really like the coloring though this is accurate to the Clone Wars you got the red the white the yellow I really like this color scheme normally I'm not a huge fan of yellow but this is one of the few ships in Star Wars that yellow looks really good on especially for military vehicles I feel like it really helps make this ship stand out in your collection make it you look unique and give you that nice little pop of color another design issue I found is how the wings connect to the body. It uses one of these hinge pieces that moves like this and there's two of them. The problem is this wing is so heavy, especially back here. You can see this is where the wing is supposed to sit, but because of how heavy it is, it yanks on these and pulls on them, causes the wing to sag to the back. That's It's most noticeable when it's up here in landing mode because you know when it's down, you've got that gravity help pulling it down, evening it out. I just don't really like seeing my Legos being bent and tested like that. So if you're going to build this, I'd recommend trying to fit in a third one of these here on the back to kind of help displace that weight and support this back area so it doesn't sag as much. Now, moving on to the back section. A lot of you longtime viewers of the channel know that I am a sucker for the rear section of a ship. I love the way the engines look. I love the I love engines. I love the way they look, the way they sound, the way they integrate with the ship. And I really like the and appreciate the detail he did here on the back. You have the kind of two trans clear cylinders right here. And then you have the six larger blue engines right here. The only thing that I don't like is these are studs. Um, I would have liked to have done like tiles, maybe grills. That's something I can, you know, modify pretty easily later on. And you've got this nice little grill piece right here in the center. I also really like how he was able to capture the angle of the ship. The ship has some unique angles with the entire sides of, with both sides of the ship kind of being at an angle and not flat. And he did a good job of capturing that the whole way down the ship. Moving on to the front of the body, you can see we've got a nice little rotating cannon down here and then just some little greebling sections right here on the side of the ship and then if you move up here to the top middle there's a little bit more greebling there i would have liked to see a little bit more greebling on these i actually added some myself uh, i think it was these pieces and i can't remember what else but it basically mirrors itself over here on this side as well and then here on the neck we've got some more greebling pieces leading up to the cockpit leading up to the cockpit all right the cockpit is hands down probably one of the coolest parts of the ship which kind of makes sense you know you kind of got the most going on here and this is where the pilots sit and operate the craft. So you've got a double windshield piece here that opens in the back and in the front, which is nice because it gives you easy access to the pilots and you can get your fingers down in here, especially for me because I've got these short stubby fingers. So I can pull the pilots out pretty easily most of the time. There's some really nice attention to detail inside the cockpit. You can see you've got these two seats right here. And instead of going with just like the one molded piece Lego seat, he went, took the time to build custom seats can see you can adjust the position and they've got this nice little headrest here on the back. Here in the gunner's section you've got the controls on either side. You can't see this, the front super well but the front pilot does have some controls up here as well. On either side of the ship there are these dual mounted rotating laser cannons. Nice little play feature. I like the posability. You can kind of pose it you know shooting up at aircraft up above it or laying down some suppressive fire for troops on the ground. Moving on to one of my favorite features of this ship and kind of one of the deciding factors for me going with this model is this front hatch right here that opens up revealing a nice little hallway that goes back there. So that's where you know technic that's where the actual ship would connect to that rear cargo area and where the troops and cargo would come out to be unloaded. This door is pretty thick. You can see it's about a brick thick, which is kind of interesting when you flop it down like this just because it looks really big and there's a bit of a step there for minifigures, but it's not a big deal. It's not super tall. You can see you can fit a minifigure in here standing, but he'll kind of hit his head on stuff. So 
you can't really pose minifigures too deep in here. You can mostly put them out here on the doorway, which I don't think is a big deal because, you know, you can't really see them super well once you stick them super far back in there anyways. The door itself is pretty sturdy and opens and closes pretty easily. I usually just hook one of these little round tiles right here and then open it like that. I'm gonna show you guys the stand too. Not much to say about it, it's extremely sturdy. I really like that. Really little to no wiggling unless I'm like really applying pressure. It supports the shuttle pretty nicely. The only modification I made was on the top here. I added these tiles because I didn't want the ship to connect direct because I didn't want the ship to connect directly to these studs because then I knew once I was trying to take it off, make it extremely hard and I felt like pieces were gonna come off that way. And then I, act, I added an extra row of Technic bricks right here just because when the ship was sitting on here with the wings down, the wings were hitting the ground. And I didn't like that look, I wanted it to look suspended above the air. So I made it a little bit taller so it could do that. Then here on the bottom, we've got um, you know some little slopes, some little areas areas to add like some minifigures or maybe like a UCS sticker if you do get one for it. So that about wraps up the walkthrough portion of this review. There are a couple of things I did want to note. The first is the stand. Um, it, it's kind of rear heavy. So if you see if I knock this, like it, it leans towards the back really easily. The nice thing is that stand goes up inside the shuttle. There's like an opening in there for it to slide up in. So even though it moves like that, like it's, you can see I'm pushing pretty hard. It's pretty much impossible for it to fall off, but that is one thing to note. I've scared myself a couple of times knocking it like that. Then the second part is the wings. Because of the situation with these wings and how they're built, this thing is definitely not a play set. This section here is fairly sturdy. This section's a little bit worse, but still pretty good. These wings, however, are pretty fragile, especially this piece right here. So this is something that you're not gonna wanna move. You're not gonna wanna open or close these wings a lot and basically just kinda leave them in whatever position you put them unless you know, you're ready to go through the hassle of things breaking off and then fixing things and then readjusting the wings. So let's talk about the design. Overall, I really like the look of this ship. I feel like it's a great display piece and you look at it and you instantly think like UCS scale, big time Lego Star Wars set, you know what I mean? When you get down to it, the design, if you get into the real nitty gritty, there are some problems that I, or issues that I found with the build, kind of like I talked about with the wings, the greebling here on the front, and there are a couple other pieces I had to modify, like there was just some areas in the instructions that weren't physically possible, which kind of makes sense considering Bruxy, the person who designed this, never actually physically built the model, only rendered it, and so, you guys know at that point, you know, there are things that can happen digitally that can't happen physically and that's kind of the case here. So if you're building, you kind of just have to be aware of that and kind of figure out a physical workaround. It's nothing major. Obviously, I was able to do it pretty easily, which means, you know, a lot of you guys can do that as well. It does look a little bit unfinished. There are areas I had to finish and still would like to change. That's kind of personal preference, so I don't wanna like knock the ship too much for that, just because, you know, we all have our different ideas of what finished looked like, looks like, but they're just a lot of exposed studs for me for a, for a custom build. Honestly, the price is not as big of a deal as I thought it would be. It's around $400. I spent a little bit over $400, but I have a lot of extra parts because I accidentally double ordered a bunch of things, triple ordered some things, which is okay. You know, I'll be able to just use those for the rest of my parts collection. But what I really like is that he took the time to design a stand as well, and that figures into the price. And that's shipping as well from all the different Bricklink stores. I like that he included the stand because this is one of those sets that looks best with the wings down. It just doesn't look as good in landing mode. It's kind of, you know, hidden underneath this little canopy. So I like that he realized that and included the stand instructions. I would like to point out too that this is definitely not a play set. This is one thing that you're probably not gonna wanna get around, get down and swoosh around a lot. I've been doing that a lot lately because I love doing that with new builds. And I tend to break off a lot of panels and pieces, especially here on the front and on the sides. But you know, I kind of expect that, you know, I've got the UCS ATTE, I've got this acclimator that I built and designed. And so I'm kind of aware that of that, but I just wanted to make sure, you know, anybody going into this knows this is gonna be something that you build, put in mocks or put on the shelf. That wraps up everything I want to say to you guys. It felt good to do a review again. I would like to do more of these custom reviews moving forward, just so I can kind of help bring to light awesome builds that I find and kind of help you guys find custom creations you're looking for that Lego hasn't built yet. Don't forget to let me know what you thought about this shuttle down below in the comments as well as what you thought about the review, if there's anything you liked, didn't like, or anything that I could change. Feel free to let me know down there. And of course, if you haven't already, don't forget to execute Order 66 on that like button. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future content. But until next time, happy building.